Okay, so hi everybody. I hope everybody is well. Uh, we are Wednesday, so it's our historical uh, series. So we're actually starting the second uh, series, first part of the second series about the Golden Age, uh, well, about Prince Henry the Navigator and the start of the discoveries, okay? So after what I really believe is fascinating, uh, the story of the Templars and the Order of Christ, that we covered last week. We are now leaving the Middle Ages and entering the very exciting time of the Renaissance in Europe with the first part of our second historical series about the Portuguese Golden Age of the Discoveries. We saw last week that by the end of the 14th century, the Reconquista in Portugal was a thing from the past. There were actually Arabs, Christians and Jews living side by side in the major Portuguese cities, uh, which is quite, you know, uh, amazing to know with everything which is happening now. Uh, indeed, we will see that some of the funding for the early di discoveries came from the from Jewish hands, uh, showing how close the order of Christ had come to that community. Um, <coughs> we always refer to Henry the Navigator at the beginning of the 15th century as the start of the Discovery's Golden Age of Portugal. But actually the beginning of Portugal's pioneering role in world exploration can be traced back to as far as 1279 with King Dinish, who set out to improve Portugal, Portugal emerging navy. You remember we spoke about that in the first uh, series. Um, so, King Dinish for that purpose, invited a Genoese, a Genoese sea captain to Portugal and he placed him in charge of developing the mercantile and naval fleets. He also ordered the Atlantic coastline planted with trees to provide timber for the ocean-going fleets he envisioned in Portugal's future already at that time. So that was... Uh, you know, about uh, 150 years before Henry the Navigator, they were already thinking about um, going into the ocean. So in 1341, a fleet of three vessels sailed from Lisbon and explored the Canary Islands of the northwestern coast of Africa. So that was before Henry the Navigator. Although the, na the expedition showed no profit and Castile later gained control of the island, you know, <laughs> <coughs> the kingdom of Leon and Castile was still trying to uh, to uh, uh, get uh, Portugal or back into control. So this voyage was the first official exploring expedition by European state, and we are in the middle of the of the 14th century. And very quickly, a Portuguese captain became the best in Europe, sailing the most maneuverable ships and applying the latest innovations in the field of navigation and cartography. Very, very important time for them. Um, I will share a video about this on Facebook, but you can already go to our YouTube channel and go in the historic, historic list. You will find a very, very interesting video which explains in more details the incredible progress the Portuguese initiated at those times with the caravel and the new navigation tools and cartography skills. So have a look, it, it's really worth it. So the big question is why the Portuguese were so keen to go into those maritime travels and discoveries? Um, well, for, for many centuries, there had been three main trade routes from the East to the Mediterranean and Europe, okay? First, it was a long overland journey from China across Central Asia to the Black Sea, then by ship from India to the Persian Gulf, and uh, finally, so th and finally, overland over Baghdad or Damascus uh, to Mediterranean ports. Uh, that was before the Canal of Suez, of course. So once goods reached these ports, uh, they were then monopolized by the, at that time, very powerful northern Italian trade city states. Uh, so we are talking especially about Venice and Geon Genoa, of course, Genoa which distributed then the product throughout, the, throughout Europe. So there was a kind of monopoly there. And this is really what pushed the Portuguese to the sea to find a sea route to India. These voyages were motivated by traditional Christian hostility 
towards Islam on one hand, of course, but also, and very quickly, now that the borders in land had been secured from the kingdom of uh, Leon F. Kashti and from the Moors, by his desire for commercial gains and its independence from the powerful Italian trade cities. So the Portuguese knew that if they could find a sea route through uh, to India, they would automatically gain the monopoly of the spice trade. And jumping ahead a little bit here, exotic, exotic spices like cinnamon, pepper, cloves, nutmeg, became a great source of wealth for Portugal, culminating when the much disputed Molucas or Spice Islands in the Indonesia of today, so it's all the, all the very small islands which makes uh, Indonesia, so those were called the Spice Islands, uh, contested by all the great nations of the time, so we're talking about England, Holland, Spain and Portugal. So um, uh, when, uh, so Portugal uh, purchased those islands uh, from Spain in 1528, okay? So on this conquest of the Spice uh, Island in the region of Indonesia today, I recommend you very strongly to read one of the books I read many years ago uh, about the Spice's trade roads. Roads, uh, roads. <laughs> uh, it's entitled Nathaniel's Nutmeg, How One Man's Courage Changed the Course of History. And it was published in 1999, uh, written by Gilles Milton. Um, I think I've got a copy of the book here. Yeah. And uh, it's really the extraordinary story of the nutmeg spice and its trade, uh, the island of Rome, and a uh, heroic English adventurer. Uh, I really, really recommend. I, I have a, a great memory of this book. It's, it was amazing. So um, spices were more a necessity than a luxury for the Europeans. Prices in Europe for these goods were high, and profits were very good. Uh, for that, the Portuguese hoped they could find their own route to the Indies and break the Venetian str uh, stranglehold. So that was really, really the, the purpose. It's, it was a trade, a trade road to India. So because of the ignorance of the large size of the African continent, I mean, nobody knew at that time how big those um, that, uh, and probably they didn't know it was a, con a continent, you know, all those lands, uh, they didn't know how big it was. So the Portuguese were first obsessed with conquering Morocco in North Africa, which they saw as a stepping stone to control the gold trade, and very quickly also the slave trade. So as a result, Prince Henry the Navigator laid plans to conquer the Moroccan trading port of Ceuta. A fleet of 200 vessels landed troops outside the walls of the city, and it fell to the Portuguese in 1415 after just one day of fighting. So we are in the early 15th um, century, okay? Um, very, I mean, amazing, quite fascinating. I mean, we didn't, they didn't know much at that time, you know, of everything that we know now. Uh, so from then on, Prince Henry the Navigator set Portugal on its course towards overseas expansion. That, that was really the start of the, of the longer uh, uh, journeys. He established a center for study of navigation, naval architecture, and astronomy at Sagres in the Algarve. I mean, astronomy was very important as well for to guide, to be able to guide uh, the ships uh, in the Algarve. So, at Sagres in the Algarve, where they developed a powerful ship called the Caravel. And the Caravel, its advantage of, over the uh, other ships was this triangular sail, which you, re you remember we saw last week. The the cross of the Order of Christ, which could be trimmed to allow the ship to proceed in either cross or headwinds. I mean, the the sail the sailmen uh, amongst amongst you um, will 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 uh, understand what cross and the headwinds uh, how important it was. So please refer to the video I mentioned earlier on about these ships, the navigational instruments and cartography progress which really revolutionized the maritime expedition at these times. So Prince Harry began dispatching ships into the Atlantic with orders to proceed as far as they could, map the coast uh, or any island sighted, and very important, return. That was, you know, some of those ships never returned. Soon, one of his captains, Diogo de Silves, came across the islands of Madeira and Azores, which is part of Portugal now, 
uh, and that was in 1427, so really at the, at the, at the start. In 1434, Jill Innes runs uh, Cape Bojador uh, at, the western of sub, uh, at the western point of Sahara and Morocco. Um, actually, Prince Henry ordered, ordered him uh, to run Cape Bojador, a feared place where some believe boiling waters produced an intense heat which no man could survive. I mean, <coughs> they, they never went so far, so there were still all those incredible stories of monsters and what was in the ocean. And, and I'm not too sure, but I, I think still at that time they didn't know uh, the earth was uh, rounded. So it is said that Inns turned back 15 times before finally passing it in 1433. And within a decade after Inns' breakthrough, Prince Henry's ships began to bring gold and slaves uh, back from the African coast, as uh, I mentioned just before. In 1460, six zero, Diogo Gomez discovered the, ca the Cap Verde archipelago. Uh, it's also the year Henry the Navigator died. Uh, so, third son of Jean I, master of the healthy, wealthy Order of Christ, as we have seen last week, and governor of the Algarve, he laid the foundation of Portugal maritime expeditions, funded by the Order of Christ, amazing fortune, and the help of the strong Jewish community already in Portugal at those times, as uh, I mentioned before. Um, these, these actually were going to be immensely persecuted, as I will be narrating in a future series. So after Henry the, Na the Henry the Navigator's death, Jean II and principally uh, everybody remember is really the Manuel I uh, reign, were going to build and expand on this foundation, and that was really the heart of the discovery uh, when they went to India and came back, and all those uh, incredible uh, stories, um, which we will uh, uh, which we will cover uh, next week. Okay, so. Uh, we will cover that yeah, in uh, next week episode, you know. Um, lots of, that that's really was the center of the um, of the of the discoveries. Uh, talking, you know, about uh, uh, you you will see lots of, lots of uh, important and amazing uh, story that uh, we will talk about with you know Vasco de Gamage and and uh, many others okay so hope you hope you enjoyed um like the video um uh, subscribe to the youtube channel go on the facebook page go on the website uh, hope you like it and um, hope to see you soon uh, hope to see you here uh, very soon okay and enjoy okay bye